hello friends welcome to abacus acumen for quick and sound learning so in this video tutorial i will explain you about the chirpy impact uh, test simulation and this uh, we are going to build in abacus ca 6.14 preprocessor and uh, the about the johnson cook material model if you refer back to one of the, our previous video wherein we have explained you about uh, the background of the johnson cook material model with the damage evaluation and the typical use of johnson cook material is the where you want to represent the the triaxial state of stress plus uh, the strain rate effect and the the temperature effect in one material model that is a one universal material model for the metal so where you can uh, conveniently use the johnson cook material model and uh, in earlier video i also uh, give you few references uh, in terms of uh, the technical papers uh, which thoroughly explains you about the test setups or the uniaxial tensile test which can be used to develop the material parameter material constants so in this tutorial i am going to use the re reference or the material parameters and the damage parameters uh, directly from the test reference test paper so over the time uh, i mean how you go through this video you will understand the the different critical steps involved setting up this simulation for this uh, chirpy sample test so let's uh, go back and understand some of the inputs for this uh, simulation so this is uh, the FE model setup, the Charpy impact test. So it has a, a sample of 10 by 10 uh, size with uh, around 56 millimeter is a length, and uh, out of 56 millimeter, around 40 millimeter is sim simply supported. So we are going to have. So this uh, setup is uh, taken from the ESTM E23 requirements. So you can uh, always refer. This is one of the st uh, standard method which is. Uh, referred as uh, app ASTM E23 so you can always uh, procure this uh, test uh, document and go through and understand the how exactly this test has been conducted so for for this simulation and for this uh, demonstration purposes I have uh, <coughs> compiled this information in this slide so we have this uh, simply supported condition with the 40 millimeter of uh, span with a V notch around 45 degrees L degree celsius and uh, the depth is 2 millimeter of this v notch and there is an impactor which is i'm going to model with the with the steel properties and this uh, has uh, the chamfer radius of 0.8 millimeter with a 30 degree as the angle between uh, these two edges and the material what i'm considering for the simulation is sample is uh, aluminum and the unit system is uh, newton ton millimeter and second so approximately i am applying the impact velocity of 2500 millimeter per second and the impactor mass which is around 1.5 kg so this mass i am representing by uh, manipulating the density of the impactor that is the steel material so although it it won't remain steel if we change the density but for the simulation purpose the properties that modulus and all i'm considering the steel modulus properties but uh, when we apply the density so i'm going to change it to this number so that it will represent 1.5 kg so this is one way where we can uh, <coughs> use the density numbers to uh, get the the mass we want during the impact so ultimately we want to apply the kinetic energy the initial energy and that is uh, it's kind of uh, converted from the potential energy calculation from the charity impact test setup that is uh, you can do some hand calculation in the background and understand what is the initial impact energy so so the for that the the inputs for us over here is 1.5 kg is approximate mass and then followed by this impact velocity there is a kinetic energy it will give and that particular kinetic energy is the initial impact energy uh, for this uh, aluminum sample uh, toughness uh, evaluation <coughs> okay let's go back to the abacus cae tool so let's start with the start with the sample so let's build the geometry first and then we'll apply the loads and boundary condition part and of course the critical part is the material model definition that is the johnson cook in uh, in abacus i'm going with sample that is a solid extrusion continue so initially i am going to build the profile it will take a couple of uh, minutes to get this done the geometry part So 
so those who are familiar with uh, building the geometry part they can skip and uh, they can directly uh, go to the time instant where I'm going to explain you about the material model part so I advise but just to have a flow and the continuation I advise you to go through the all the details step So we have depth is 10 millimeter. Okay, so this is uh, what we have. And then let's understand <coughs> the datum part. So I will go ahead and create the, the assembly part for this so that uh, we can slightly do a positioning part over here. Okay, so for convenient purpose and the other geometric operations, I am shifting here to 0, 0 coordinates. So let me understand the distances so in x direction so minus 6.81 okay So I'll go to the part again and I will do some uh, partition activities so you can just follow uh, so this I'm doing it to have a geometry based the boundary conditions later on and also it will help in uh, having the fine mesh in at the center and which is very important when we do this uh, chart impact test so this is visor plane set uh, zero zero So I'll go back to the assembly part. So here I will create a YZ plane. Yep. And then do the partition of this uh, cell using datum plane make dependent okay so we'll do this uh, as well make dependent let us try it now Select the datum plane, alright. This is done. alright so it is there so here <clears throat> in this portion I'm going to do a fine mesh and then uh, so this edge I will use it for the simply support condition that is a 40 millimeter span these two edges and then 
<clears throat> so other one is a there is kind of a overhang uh, portion for the sample now let's build uh, the anvil part So this is a chamfer. So here the radius is uh, fillet radius is uh, 0.8. Select the two sides, so it automatically creates, and then we'll have uh, try to have an angle over here that is 30. So we'll uh, make the equal length for these two sides. Okay and these two sides also we want to have equal length all right and then we can set the right and set up this angle okay <clears throat> this sounds good and now we'll extrude it by uh, 14 millimeter let's say so it's slightly it will it is having the width of the sample piece and with a two millimeter overhang on each side so maybe <clears throat> I think uh, so where to do a repositioning over here let me measure few distances X is 28.75111 one, two, okay So this is in Y plus uh, two millimeter. now we'll go and create the properties for this uh, different materials so first is the for the part uh, sample okay so so this is the critical part guys so I want you to <clears throat> make a note of these things So this is uh, the aluminium material. So Ings modulus is seventy uh, k MPA. Two point three. Then I'll density. I will define two point seven. E raised to minus nine. So, so just to remind you, we are using the unit system of uh, Newton ton millimeter and second. So, so that is the reason you are seeing the mass density. It is in uh, ton per millimeter cube. And then let's uh, go for the plastic part. So here we have to 
select the Johnson Cook and you now we are defining the parameters for the the Johnson Cook uh, equation so that is uh, the first parameter is a three to four so so when we while doing this so I expect you that you are clear about uh, the, the you know you can always refer back the video what we released before uh, re explaining about the Johnson Cook material model and some significance and the application part so from that background <clears throat> so now we can no I can directly uh, you know we can directly start defining these parameters this is exponent coefficient is 0.42 so m part I'm going with a zero number okay and here where to say rate dependent and select the Johnson cook and for the C parameter it is 0.0026 epsilon dot one just say okay so this is done now I'll go for the damage Johnson cook so DN is minus 0 0.77 D2 is 1.45 D3 is 0.47 D4 is uh, 0.001 and d you none so uh, guys just to uh, remind you again so one of the point is uh, in this uh, tutorial for this chrp impact i am considering the power law that is a stress strain curve with the yield and the <coughs> modulus part and plus that is the plastic portion and along with the strain rate effect so the temperature effect is been is not been considered for this uh, evaluation so maybe in next tutorial i will explain you about uh, the accounting for the temperature effect as well so for the for this tutorial it is restricted or it contains the the <coughs> the triaxial uh, the tri stress uh, st stress state tri state of stress that is through the v notch and then the the power law along with uh, the strain rate uh, effect So this is done so now we'll select the uh, annual part and, and then apply the steel properties so this is for annual this is uh, it has very simple properties modulus and the density should, is good enough so there are several ways uh, one one can model the impactor so we can also uh, model considering as a rigid body and otherwise we can have uh, this kind of the one I'm showing with the uh, steel properties so here I am deliberately putting this uh, mass density as 1 e raised to minus 6 so it will represent uh, approximately 1.5 kg of uh, mass of the impactor so so as per your need uh, you can always uh, play around with the velocity and the mass so which is uh, you can directly take it from your test requirements and then you can manipulate the the mass you require and the velocity required for conducting sim this simulation so here i'm just demonstrating how you can really play around with the parameters to into get the the desired simulation of the results uh, for you this 
is done so we'll define the section that is anvil this assembly done and then we'll go for the step part so this is uh, explicit dynamic time period uh, should be 2 milliseconds should be fine so it is 0 0.002 So I'm going to define the surface to surface contact between uh, the master that is impactor surface to the, the slave part. So for that uh, I'm preparing the surfaces so you can just observe I think you may be familiar as well. <clears throat> if not you can go through all the steps so I'm going to show you. In assembly look for surfaces so I'm going to create uh, surface that is master of anvil done so I'll create one more surface that is slave So now we can define surface to surface contact explicit and then select from that is the master continue and then slave continue here you can define the contact parameter that is the friction part tangential so this is for penalty coefficient of friction I'm going with 0 0.25 here just say okay so this is contact is done now let's mesh this part okay so I will go by <clears throat> the first part that is uh, the sample one so for we just hide this one okay so so, so.
so go to explicit and here I'm going to choose the enhanced tower loss control and then followed by there is one more important uh, step is uh, element deletion so yeah here it is so element deletion so I'm going to say yes okay so how this element deletion is going to occur depending upon the the damage criteria what we define say yes okay dismiss and uh, so we'd like to have Zero point two. So for fine mesh, uh, I'll do it again. Okay. For the rest of the edges. I will go for point eight. So let me match this part. okay so this we got a fine mesh at the center and then followed by the course at the outer <coughs> okay so let me do the meshing of the annual as well so I'm going to hide the sample part and I will let me bring the anvil part so here also would like to have a fine mesh at this tip portion I'm going with and then followed by here point it again okay done I'd like to match this part okay it is meshed right now yeah, now I can show alright so this is done so now we'll apply the loads and bonding condition part <clears throat> so let's go to load and apply the simply supported condition that is PC1 continue I'm going to select <coughs> excuse me <coughs> So this is span of 40 millimeter. So this is U2, is right? Is another boundary condition that is for this part. So only I'm going to consent uh, the U1 and uh, U3. That is uh, X and Z. G direction and only U2 I'm going to allow with initial velocity okay, now we'll 
apply initial velocity initial velocity Minus 2500 millimeter per second. Okay, this is done. And in step, I need to the output request. So I will set up that as well. All right. So here, I would like to have the output at exact time interval of phi u e raised to minus phi u okay so this is also would like to see okay the value integer must be phi raised to minus phi Well, let me see this the expression does not evaluate an integer and must be corrected okay okay All right. okay so now uh, Let's have the output as well. Output request, history output at the same frequency. Excellent. So, so that will have control like what exactly we're looking at, at what the interval we're looking for. Okay, so this is done. So, uh, guys, uh, what we had. Uh, now let me recap what we have done. So we have built this geometry, we have positioned this part and we have partitioned the, the sample part to make a provision for the, the meshing that is a fine mesh in, at the center and then uh, followed by the coarse mesh at the outer side and then there is a partition required for applying the simply supported boundary condition with a span of 40 millimeter and uh, the boundary conditions uh, uh, for this uh, impactor is uh, the all uh, the translation degrees of freedom in uh, lateral direction has been restricted only the translation in uh, in the velocity that is the impact direction that is a y direction is uh, allowed okay and of course the the johnson cook material model with a damage evaluation has been defined so now i think we are all set to submit uh, uh, the run for this model So job one continue okay and yeah, I'm going to submit so it will take uh, a while to have the results for this model let me see whether how far we are going reference turn rate for Johnson good ammunition must be greater than G okay all right it all right so let me go back to the property part so, so here edit so this is one <coughs> yep so i missed this point so we are all uh, set uh, to submit this job and uh, we already defined uh, the strain rate part also let me uh, take a look so there is one more small uh, activities involved so we need to get this impactor and the at the center so let me do that as well so that is uh, I think two millimeter in Z direction okay let's submit it again okay 
I'm just overwriting it. So it will take a while. So guys, I have a result to share. So here you can, uh, I just loaded the ODB file uh, to this uh, <coughs> Sharpie model, what we have built. And uh, I'm just going through the, the the contour plot, the distresses. So let pay, let us have uh, the, the animation files. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, so here it is. So we are we are done with the simulation. You can see the the impactor is uh, creating the fracture into the sample, and uh, and as expected, the this is you know the triggering point that is a V notch point. So from that the crack has initiated and it is going all along this uh, direction. So so this way you can uh, visualize and understand uh, the the behavior of the sample under the impact load. Okay, and uh, there is one more parameter you can always look at uh, is the internal energy part. So here you can uh, look at the in internal energy plot. So you can see <coughs> the around. Uh, at this point it start uh, you know once it is a hitting point of impactor and then slowly uh, the energy is being absorbed while it is being fractured and then it, at the end it it it, it completely uh, it, it becomes two piece and there is no any further energy absorption for this uh, aluminum sample piece so so this is uh, what i wanted to sh uh, take you through from this tutorial so i hope uh, you understand all the steps involved into this uh, charpy impact test and i uh, suggest you to go through this video and uh, try to follow all the uh, steps uh, mentioned in this uh, tutorial and there is also one point we missed uh, during that uh, exercise is uh, defining the strain rate uh, uh, reference strain rate so that you have to put as 1.0 and uh, at the same time you need to explore few other things in terms of uh, customizing this uh, method as per your requirement if you like this video please go ahead and uh, like this video and also recommend you to subscribe our channel so that you can keep receiving new videos from us thank you bye bye